Thank you so much, Mintu, for joining us here at the Big Data Conference. Uh, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the Center for Digital Health and what you've been doing. Sure. Well, it's, it's really fun to be here at our Big Data Conference. Stanford, as you know, is a place where there's just so much going on across, very broadly, health tech, uh, digital health, and everything in between. And so it's also fun to kind of see where we are at the center every year as we're getting bigger and bigger. The Center for Digital Health is a center that's really internally facing to benefit the Stanford community, starting with the School of Medicine and then more broadly. We want to do three things here, and our goal is to enable faculty, students, and staff to do really cool stuff, connect to technology partners in partnership to do these key projects, uh, innovations, and research, and for some large seminal projects, we take the lead in uh, leading these research programs and doing large clinical trials at scale. Mm -hmm. And could you talk a little bit more about those research trials at scale? I know you've done some personally. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we, we're doing a lot right now. And uh, this started very organically as an extension uh, for me as a cardiologist and arrhythmia specialist uh, out of the diseases that I care about and that I've studied, one of which is atrial fibrillation, which is an irregular heart rhythm. Uh, and so with that, uh, it's been a very early use case for sensors because one of the key questions was, can you use a smartwatch or can you use some sensor to monitor and detect with a high level of accuracy in a regular rhythm without needing the traditional ECG or even an ECG-based monitoring device that although they've miniaturized are quite cumbersome. And so we've worked on a variety of projects to really understand how these technologies can be used in practice, going all the way from disease management, where we have a study called the Smart Adhere Study, that's looking at technology-guided, blended interventions, tech, apps, nudges, all the way to a human being talking to uh, a patient on whether they can improve medication adherence to the things that they need like blood thinners, which are needed to prevent stroke. And so that's one example of a blended intervention uh, that's not really wearable focus, but it's taking the technology and, uh, and integrating with the human component to affect behavioral change. We have other larger studies ongoing right now, like uh, the Apple Heart Study, which we're doing in partnership with Apple, and that is a large uh, sightless virtual study, so to speak, to examine whether we can identify heart rhythm disorders and to look at the downstream outcomes of integrating such an algorithm or technology on a sensor like a smartwatch. And so those are some of the key projects we're doing, but it's also helped us build out a lot of the infrastructure we need to do trials across a variety of disease states, which is where we're going now. Mm -hmm. And I know you've really enabled a lot of other Stanford researchers to do similar, similar trials. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's been a real partnership with a, a number of groups here, including our center, uh, the Center for Digital Health, the Stanford Center for Clinical Research, the Quantitative Sciences Unit. And when I start rattling all these names, it sounds a bit bureaucratic, but we really work like a mesh uh, and work very closely to, to build these platforms. So if you think about any large study at scale, uh, especially if you go virtual, you need a, a data platform, you need a lot of compliance on um, on making sure the app and the data transfers meet all the privacy and security re regulations, not just of your own institution, but for human subjects research. Uh, you may then add overlays for regulatory uh, approvals such as FDA. And so you want to make sure that that is all compliant and that you have the data flows. It's not a trivial task. And we have a ton of help uh, from our colleagues here in the School of Medicine Research IT. The data coordinating and clinical coordinating center functions we can do, and we've effectively created a digital health coordinating center to run a lot of these trials. And that's, I think, really novel and really different than the way that we think about uh, the old school way of doing trials and a lot of, uh, uh, and what a lot of centers continue to do. And so it's building those kind of elements uh, that allows us to really uh, do this very inexpensively in an incremental way where we're really not starting from zero. The way trials used to be, for every trial you started, you needed sites, you needed this, you needed that, you needed a paper trail and forms. And it was like creating a pop-up restaurant, a Michelin star pop-up restaurant every time. And then you take it down and move on to the next one. And so what we want to do now is avoid that approach and try to do more and more quickly and at lower cost. Great. Thank you so much. My Appreciate pleasure. It. Thank you.